Hello everybody. Welcome back to How to Build a B-1 Bomber. Yeah, we made it back from Texas. And I haven't did a whole lot since I got back. Put this thing up on the table. I had to take a break for a couple of days. But I did put my nacelles on it. Someone was wanting to walk around, so we'll go over it a little bit and show you what I got going. Well, I'll tell you what, them people down there in Breckenridge sure did like this. And uh, they had a film crew from Dias Air Force Base come out with a couple B-1 pilots. And uh, they just loved it, too. But there it is with the nacelles on it. And uh, I've still got some work to do. But I'm going to kind of decide what I'm going to do here. I got the telcones on it too. That really makes it look tough. But I met Tom Cook in Breckenridge. Yes, he came out there. For you people don't, who don't know who Tom Cook is, he owns Jet Model Products. Okay? He was building ducted fans uh, 25 years ago. Him and Bob Violet really are the two that really came up with the first fan units that uh, flew these things. Because uh, way back when Tom Cook was first making his F4, we used them Turbac one, Turbax 1s with uh, OS 45s. And man, I'll tell you what, you really had to build it light to get them up. But I've seen a couple of them things fly with them 45s, and they really flew pretty good. But uh, Tom Cook is the one who came up with the Dynamax fan unit and built them F4s for years now. He's one of the best model makers in the world. His stuff is top class. And uh, he was impressed with the B1 too. And he invited me out to his shop and was going, was going to let me watch him do some layups. So uh, I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, sit back for a couple days, get the shop cleaned up. And uh, uh, get a hold of old Tom, see when it's a good time to come out. And you never know, he might let me make a movie there. And that would be, just be awesome. Because I'll tell you what, his stuff is top first class. You don't get no better than Tom Cook's stuff. Uh, it, it's just not possible. He's the best. He's making a great big Dauntless now. Oh, it is just awesome awesome it's got every little rivet every little detail they actually made a wood plug and covered it with metal and every rivet is actually like a nail and it's got the the wrinkle in the skins oh and it's just awesome and i would just and his technique he don't vacuum back he says that's how i get all these voids by my edges he says that's caused by the vacuum bagging itself he says that's why he don't do it what he does is he uses more layers of lighter cloth and uh, to make it go into them contours and them corners and then he puts like this layer of foam and then more glass and his like his wing structures have nothing in it but yet they're firm and I just really want to go learn how to how to do that and I know you guys out there would too but then, then I'll decide if I'm going to make a new one. Uh, I mean, this one's in good shape. I mean, a little bit of filling. I mean, that's not that big a deal. You know, I can just, where it goes across my panel lines, I'll just put some tape there and then fill it and then pull my tape out. And uh, I can make her look good in uh, no time at all. I just want to go out to Tom's, you know. And, uh, man, what a nice guy. I mean, it, they don't get no nicer than that. That is just one nice, down-to-earth gentleman. And, uh, listen, everyone out there, let's do this for Tom. And he might let me bring my camera. Everyone, all around the world, let's get a shout-out to Tom Cook. What's up, Tom? It's nice to meet you, man. Really was. You've been my idol for a long time. And, uh... Maybe he'll let me bring my camera. And uh, 
But I'll let you know what happens. I'll call him in the next day or two. I want to let him get home and and uh, get his trailer straightened out. And uh, we'll give him a call and uh, see what happens. But I did pick up my servos. These are going to be my elevator servos. This is, look, this is a metal case on these things. These are some massive Seiko servos. S-E-I-K-O. These are just some massive dudes. These aren't measured in ounces. These are measured in pounds. But they actually got their own power source. You plug that one into a, your receiver. And then you run a separate battery pack to them to uh, them wires there. And them and some mega poundage things. So I got two of these. So I'm going to put these on my elevators. And uh, that'll move them. That'll move them stabs, by golly. But we sure had a good time in Texas. I want to thank everybody, everyone that was involved in that. We had a spectacular time. And, man, I can't wait till next year. Met a lot of nice people. A lot of people came out just to see the B-1. And you know what they wanted to see? They wanted to see the finger, the pointing finger. They want to know how I got that roll down. I tell them it's not just a wiggle, it's a roll. You got to roll the finger. <laughs> but we sure had a good time. And, uh, yeah, we took this thing down there on the, on the jet ski trailer. Was to, my cousin's got a 22-foot trailer. He was supposed to go with me. And I kind of backed out to last minute. So we had to strap this thing down to that jet ski trailer and I tell you what I think it kind of helped my gas mileage a little bit I think it evened out the flow behind the truck and uh, we got there and back not a problem but uh there it is there's the B1 sitting there on its wheels and uh man it looks good I was afraid them tires was going to come out looking kind of small you know because them's really kind of the biggest ones we could get but uh I think they're perfect. Them gears should look nice. They sure look nice sitting on them gear down there at Breckenridge. But it was raining when we left and I couldn't really take the nacelles. I just had to stick them in the back of the truck and it was raining here. So that's why I didn't take the nacelles. But uh, as soon as I got home, man, I bolted them things on. I just put a couple of wood screws in the bottom. We gotta cut, put another bulkhead. We gotta put a bulkhead back in here. So we can have something to screw to. I'll probably put like a hook in the front because I got all that carbon fiber under there. And uh, I can probably just put like a hook in the front and a couple bolts in the back. And uh, I think that'd be fine if we get a good bulkhead in there. But uh, all that's minor. We'll get that figured out. It won't take much to hold them to cells on as long as it's good. And uh, so I'll, I'll keep you guys informed. I'll let you know what's happening. Thanks for watching, and oh, one more thing, I got my computer fixed everybody, I bought me a new one, and it's working great, and uh, so I can answer some questions, and uh, try and figure out who I still owe a shirt to, I think there's a couple people out there that still got a t-shirt coming, uh, send me a message, I'll get it out to you, so until next time, thanks for watching, we will see you right here in the shop.